We're delighted to have everyone join us for another episode of In Conversation. In today's series, we are joined by Mr. Parag Rao. Parag uh, handles a large portfolio within HDFC Bank. He is the group head of the payments business, consumer finance, digital banking, and marketing. Now, while that seems like a lot to talk about in one interview, uh, we'll break it down a little bit. And starting with the payments business, as many of you might know, HDFC Bank is the market leader in credit cards. So one out of every three credit cards in the market today is issued by HDFC Bank. Similarly, in the merchant acquiring services, we are market leaders. So this is a large portion that Parag handles. Rather than going on about it, I'm going to request Parag to take us through, all our viewers through, what is the scope of this business that he handles and to just uh, help everyone understand a little bit about the scale of it. Thanks for that lovely introduction. Just to give you a sense of the size and dimensions of the business which we run, you, you started off by saying every third Indian, you're right. Every third Indian spends on cards and those cards are issued by HDFC Bank. But just before that, let me just step back okay, for the sake of the viewers. Our payment business, as we call it, consists of two core parts. One is the instruments or the accounts which consumers, customers, or even institutions, corporates, etc., use to spend and they spend at places which we typically call merchants. The acceptance side of the business is what we call electronifying all those places of spend where consumers go and use those instruments. So we straddle both sides of the payment ecosystem. In a sense, the supply side and the demand side, and that's in a very crude sense. And to give you a size of that I mentioned, every third rupee spent uh, on cards in India happens on HDFC Bank issued instruments, both credit, debit, as prepaid. On the acceptance side, I think we've got an even bigger and more dominant market share. Approximately 50% of the electronic card volumes which consumers swipe at merchants, online and offline, go through the HDFC Bank network. So that's the dimension and the size of the business. Another dimension in the card business, if you see, the card business is a mix of what we call payment business spending. And it's also an asset business because it's about an overdraft facility which you give to consumers and therefore you have what we call a book, like any asset book. To give you a dimension of the size of the book, HDFC Bank is on one side and the rest of the industry is on the other. So to be more precise, we have 52% of the of India's outstandings on the credit card business. So that's just a sliver of to give you a sense of how big and, and, and how dominating we are in the space. Thanks, Parag, for that introduction. Parag, we have seen we're going through an unprecedented situation right now. We've seen four consecutive lockdowns and we're in the process of slowly easing back to a new normal, as it were. I'm sure there have been some changes in consumption, in consumer spending, and we've seen these patterns. In fact, we've even launched an entire summer treats just last week because we've seen these changes in patterns. Can you shed some light on what we've seen in the industry in terms of changes in spending? I'll talk about three clear and distinct patterns which are emerging since March, uh, ever since the you know advent of the lockdown. So one, very clearly, traditional high ticket size expenditures in areas like ticket booking, travel, hotel bookings, etc., all have practically disappeared. Then I think the good side is that as you start now seeing the economies opening up, as you see travel starting opening up, I don't expect them to jump back to the original levels, but you see a slow opening up of that. And as we see already, even in India, Trend number two, we're clearly seeing an emergence of low ticket, daily need kind of expenditures coming back significantly on card. Pre-COVID, they were there, but a lot of that used to go on to cash or a lot of it used to go on to wallets, etc. We're seeing a resurgence of those kind of spends, what we call high frequency, low ticket spends, day-to-day -day needs. On an average, your ticket would be 300, 400, 500 rupees. So pre-COVID, if you may to say, by way of value, these spends took about six, seven, eight, nine percent of the spends today on a different denominator, obviously. Those spends form almost 20 to 25 percent of the card spends, which we are seeing and observing over April, May. So that's clearly saying that's increasing the frequency. We are seeing that's that's also resulted in more and more people pulling out their cards for more number of occasions, and hence activity on the card or activation levels as we measure one of the key metrics of the strength of a portfolio. I think those numbers have gone up. That's trend number two. The third trend which we're seeing is the emergence of work at home, work for home, and things needed to support that ecosystem of work from home. What do I mean by that? 
we've all been working from home. I saw each one of you for the last 60 days, 70 days, etc. working from home. And so therefore, there's a clear emergence of need and demand for additional TV in the bedroom, that additional laptop for your kids or for yourself, mobile, a new mobile phone, Wi-Fi, mobile accessories, and so many such things, an additional uh, vacuum cleaner for the house, and, and what have you, etc. So there's clearly a set of consumer appliances, consumer electronic appliances, home appliances, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, where we're clean, clearly seeing a demand picking up. April and May went through with a lot of closure. Shops were closed online. People were not allowed to sort of, the, the e-com guys, retailers were not allowed to deliver non-essential stuff, but we're seeing a huge pent-up demand. To give you an example, our consumer finance business, which sits right in the heart of this kind of a demand. In the month of March, we did approximately about 1,000-odd crores of consumer finance funding. In the month of April, we dropped down close to about 80-85%. In the month of May, even though we had only last 10 days of uh, which had opened up, we bounced back to the same March figure. And now going forward, we're seeing a significant surge, a lot of demand. We're talking to all the manufacturers. Each one is extremely eager, huge amount of offerings. We as employees have already seen during the festive treats, which we're seeing right now, the summer treats, a lot of offers coming out and there will be a lot more offers coming. So I expect a huge surge of demand for a lot of consumer home appliances, durables, et cetera, et cetera. That's the third key trend which we're seeing uh, happening. Thanks, Parag. So taking our trend to where you said we're seeing, you know, increasing spends on cards, what about actual demand for cards? Are we seeing... You know, maybe as people look for more digital ways to make payments, both on the consumer side with cards as well as merchant side with payment solutions, have we seen any changes there? Well, yes. Digital is the buzzword. We're clearly seeing that emerging happen. We saw an initial dip in April where, you know, most of us had were forced to stay at home. No one could really go out. So, so numbers, new acquisition numbers of cards of merchants dropped. But in May, I think we bounced back. We're clearly seeing not just physical sourcing picking up, but a lot of our digital sourcing actually picked up. And we're seeing a huge number of hits on the website, huge number of people coming and asking for cards online. Similarly, so we're seeing a huge demand for a lot of from our merchant community for our merchant app. So that's picking up. What are we doing? Teams have been working feverishly over the last 30 to 45 days to sort of get our thing done. And we've got two or three big events actually coming up over the next 45 to 60 days. We are ready to hit the market back soon. In a new avatar of HDFC Bank being the largest issuer and acquirer, but at the same time now, we intend in a very short span of time to also be the largest digital acquirer in this space. So there's a lot of excitement, Sharna. Let me also share with you that it's not just about these two products, but because digital also comes under my purview, we're working feverishly on multiple other products in the bank, especially the retail asset products and also many other liability products where we're completing the user journeys all with the single-minded focus of them being zero touch, completely digital, thereby ensuring that we can reach out to customers in all form factors, all electronic and digital form factors, 24 by 7. So sourcing will be an activity which will be 24 by 7 by 365, surely because of the way we are able to reach out to our customers through our digital platforms. So, Parag, you said that every third Indian uses our card, every third Indian transacts on our platform, digital platforms, and we are on one side of the industry as a heavyweight player, whereas the rest of the players are on the other side. Given our size and that to a big one, how do you reckon that we can still be nimble-footed and seize the opportunities? I get asked this question a lot of times, surely because of the fact that we're a market leader. And obviously, one of the important questions for a market leader is how are you going to continue being a market leader? That's what you effectively you've asked me. Well, two, three parts to our question. I think uh, let me start with, with a statement to say our strategy is fundamentally sound. It's based on extremely strong pillars, which are not just important and strong for the business, but also for the bank. It's also based on a very sharp, focused belief in payments and the growth in payments and the way we look at the marketplace, not just the payments business once again, but again, the larger retail bank and the way we, we approach our market. We focused on, right from day one, we focused on internal customers. Uh, that focus on internal customers has given us significant benefits, not just in terms of operating costs, but also in terms of picking and choosing the right kind of customers that we want to, and thereby giving us an extremely sound portfolio in terms of delinquency metrics. It's also given us the capability to reach out to our customers through multiple channels across the bank. Now, that's an extremely important variable because cards is an engagement product. Good, sound portfolio, profitable 
global portfolio comes from deeply engaged customers, which means very simply put, as many number of times you pull out your card and use your card, that much more engaged you are with our product. And that requires constant outreach to customers, constant communication to customers, the ability to reach out to him, either on a planned basis or even on a structured or a trigger basis. One metric we talked about, every third Indian uses an HDFC bank instrument to make a payment. But behind the scenes, I must share that ours is the most active portfolio. Uh, if you see the kind of spend per card and even the kind of outstandings per card, which is the ENR per card, they're the highest in the industry. We also have scale. So we benefited by the large scale distribution which HDFC Bank has laid down, especially a large branch banking network. So we are the first card in the pockets of most Indians. The key is acquire as many customers with HDFC Bank accounts. Those accounts could be a credit account, they could be a savings account, which is your debit account as we call it, or a prepaid account. On the merchant side, as many merchants you would have who would have our current accounts. So thereby, this business feeds into clearly our liability business and liability being the base ingredient of our core strategy. So, so that's one layer of our strategy. As we grow bigger as a bank, as we grow bigger as a retail bank, as we grow bigger as a payment bank, the most common factor is that our acquisition engine keeps on going up. I, I won't get into the numbers, but if you see by significant scale, the numbers we acquire on both sides is very large. The second layer is a deep engagement, both on the deep engagement philosophy. So whether it's on the issuing side, credit and debit cards, or even on the, the acceptance side with our merchants, we got an extremely strong layer focus on what we call portfolio management. It's not enough just to source, but we deeply engage with both merchants and consumers at every level. We use deep analytics through our marketing team to tell me what's the next best spend, what's the next best propensity item which an individual would do. And accordingly, we run our thousands and thousands of campaigns every month to really keep on engaging our customer and thereby we drive throughputs. In terms of number of installations of for our acceptance business, we're actually number four in the industry. But when it comes to value or the throughput or the spends which go through that fourth position number of installations, we're clearly number one. In terms of our market share I mentioned earlier, uh, we've got close to a 50% market share or every second rupee which gets spent by Indians at shops on electronic machines or online close to the HDFC bank network. Parag, what do you think of the fintechs and the startups? Uh, do you think they are disruptors? What's happening with all these startups and these fintechs? Are they going to disrupt you? Every second day, every third day, something new comes up. Some new payment form comes up, something exciting comes up. Well, the answer to whether they'll disrupt us is a clear outstanding no. We are very clear. What are we doing? The way we look at competition. I think it's important to learn from competition, to know what, what are they doing in terms of new ideas, new methods of manufacturing or transaction processing. It's important to know because we are a dominant payment player in the marketplace. And there are learnings which, are, which I'll just talk about in a minute or so. But I think the human's job, which I think a lot of this new competition is doing, I think is expanding the market. And I think that that's a very good thing. What they essentially have been doing for the last three to four years is ensuring that many new to category customers people who have never used electronic method or merchants who have never used electronic machines for accepting payments, first while we're using cash, have started experimenting with many of these multiple forms, whether they were wallets two to three years back, whether it's UPI today. You see a huge resurgence of customers moving on to this platform. And, and so the way we look at it, it's good. You're getting customers who are now used to using electronic instruments, either to accept or to pay. We are very clear, our positioning as a bank is very clear that we're a full suite bank, we're a full suite payment player. HDFC Bank is also the most trusted name in financial services. We're also the trusted name in payments. But we're very clear that not just us, but along with competition, we'll actually grow the marketplace. And our role as market leaders in both on both the sides will be to keep on expanding the marketplace. And I use this term platformification. Some of you would have recently heard the term of creating an ecosystem. Sustainable market leadership is not just about having scale and not just about throwing cashbacks. It's not just about you know having the best operational experience or the best customer experience. It involves all of them, but it also means what in your business model, how do you ensure that you have sustainability so that you keep on giving value to your customers? So what have we done? Something very simple. We all experience it. Some of you experienced it during the festive treats. 
uh, last years. You're experiencing it now in the summer trades, and that's what the consumer and the merchant see. But what's that ecosystem which you've created? We've taken the entire issuing business, the one third business or the one third of the India business on one side. We've taken the 50% of the, the market share acceptance business on the other side, brought them together. And so we've got a huge headroom to grow. We being the market leaders have a head start, our scale, our reach, our customer depth, our philosophy of some huge customer engagement, our philosophy of bringing the ecosystems of issuing and acquiring put together to bring the best value to both, and our philosophy of ensuring that we are the largest and will be in all profitable segments gives us a clear path to continue dominance in the years to come. My next question is actually on behalf of uh, my colleague uh, Rohit Panchal. You know, keeping in mind the fact that you said uh, uh, you know the uptake or the uptake in digital forms of payment. Once the lockdown eases and is easing now as we speak, you know, uh, will this trend continue uh, where we'll see the digital form of uh, payments, uh, uh, you know, influence uh, and then be more uh, prominent than, let's say, the usage of cash? Yeah, Rajiv, I think that's a clear trend, both at a consumer level and at the shopkeeper level. We're clearly seeing people actually refusing cash and requesting people to pay by cards. That's a clear trend which you're seeing emerging. A very positive trend. I'm not too sure whether I can say that it's spread out all over India, but at least in the larger cities, we're clearly seeing that trend, especially for people who are doing a lot of home deliveries. They don't want cash. They want electronic payments. That's a good trend. I do believe my sense tells me that this trend will only continue. We will now, I think, can catch up, I think, with many other developed economies where while cash still exists to a large extent, it's a significantly lower proportion as compared to India. So it's good. I think it's good. So, Parag, uh, this question is on behalf of uh, my colleague, uh, Mohit Dandekar, and here we would like you to crystal gaze a little. Uh, you said and you spoke about uh, the uptake in the digital forms of payment, uh, and on the other side, you have the physical uh, structures, the brick and mortar structures. How do you think they will play out in the coming time? Uh, you know, where and how will we find the balance between the two? The way I look at it, and I think in HDFC Bank, we believe it, I think both ecosystems will coexist. There's a physical India, physical merchants, brick and mortar merchants, which require physical forms of electronic payment methods, the forms which are traditionally used to. And there is this emerging new economy, new digital world, which loves transacting on the mobile. Huge set of customers who are now adopting mobile for making a lot of digital payments. I think both will exist. And and let me tell you, both are growing just as much and in a different avatar. When people ask me a different question, will X new form factor kill Y old form factor? I don't believe so. In the foreseeable future, all forms will coexist. Each one will find its own level of growth. And it's evidenced over the last two to three years. If you see that each and every form factor, whether it is the traditional credit cards, whether it's the traditional debit cards, whether it is traditional money transfer <laughs> over NEFT or using what we call our direct pay on net banking, each one form factor is actually growing. We are now taking that forward to even go to hyperlocal, which means that even if you go to the smallest town and the, the largest trader or the largest merchant in that town whom quite obviously will have an HDFC bank account and a current account and, and, and banks with us and our pass machine also. But with that trader who supplies to, say, 25 villages around that small town, we will have the capability to onboard this customer or this merchant onto our hyperlocal platform and thereby ensure that his benefits are given to a much larger net set of customers who not just have to, who, who can now also go online and sort of pay with him for shop goods bought through him. So we're investing in the physical space and we, we expect that to continue growing. The digital space obviously is growing. The new form factors like UPI will drive a lot of that growth, especially in the low ticket sizes. You see a lot of electronification happening in many more merchant categories, which were erstwhile cash. And you see a lot of online spends happening on that. On the digital side, online side, we have a very robust relationship with all the large online merchants. We also have very strong relationship with most of the aggregators in the online space who every month thousands of small merchants and help them on get on board. And we have our payment gateway plugged into those small merchants. Our Pays app continues growing month on month at very good growth rates. 
We're adding on features and functionalities and more number of merchants onto PaysApp. And we've got extremely aggressive plans for PaysApp for this financial year, especially given the kind of situation where people are going to sort of spend more on the mobile. So we are bullish about all three forms and we will continue investing in all form factors. Thanks, Parag, for that detailed look at our strategy. Uh, how does this strategy also cover rural and semi-urban India? Because HDFC Bank is always very bullish on that segment. Could you shed some light? I briefly mentioned about saying that, uh, especially in rural India, we'd probably be the first card in the pockets of most people living in those areas. Well, cards and merchant acquiring, both these businesses are extremely integral parts of our semi-urban and rural strategy, deeply linked with the brand strategy there. I add a third product now, consumer durables. These three products, I think, are the vanguard or the front of our consumer financial services products into that space. All our financial products, payment products will be available, the length and breadth of our branch banking network, even if it's a one-man branch, we'll have our products ready. We're very clear that we will focus on our internal customer. Even a semi-urban and rural customer requires fan, it requires a TV, it requires a mobile phone. We're there for him to be able to finance his needs. We're there for him to bring him the best of deals. Our smart buy platform and the hyperlocal platform, as you will see it when we launch it soon or relaunch it soon, will be available for him to get the best deals, even in the most remotest of locations. Of course, our smart buy online gives him those deals, uh, the best of the deals even today. So even in deep geography, a person can buy an iPhone AC, getting the best of discounts. So very clearly, the semi-urban and rural base is an important part of our core strategy. Like I said, scale, distribution, reach, similar uniform offerings to all our customers across the length and breadth of India uh, and bringing to him the best of deals will be our handmark. And, and therefore, the semi-urban and rural is as important as, say, an urban area. Let me also tell you, incrementally every month, close to 50% of our new customers or the new cards which we source actually happen in the semi-urban and rural areas. And I expect that those numbers to continue with that kind of a proportion. So, Parag, one other area that you uh, also handle is the marketing uh, part for the bank, so the marketing function. Uh, Post-lockdown, as we go into ease out of lockdown and go to the, towards a new normal, do you see a change in the way that we engage with the customer? Is there, uh, you know, maybe more one-on-one -on -one engagement with the branch? Uh, how do you see this piece? Uh, I think the lockdown has brought about, is forced to bring about a change in the way we work across every function. One is very clearly analytics and digital campaigns. This whole area, and they're like two sides of the same coin. Clearly important because our ability to physically reach out to customers is going to be a little bit constrained for obvious reasons. At the same time, our scale is such that it may not be physically possible also to reach out to most of our customers. Understanding each and every customer at a micro segmented level will be extremely critical and crucial for us as a bank and as a payments business to drive that one core philosophy of ours to say deep engagement with every customer whom we're dealing with. So we've beefed up a lot of our capabilities at our back end using, and we're really investing in those space using a lot of tools, taking work, partnering with many fintechs and startups who have developed the capability to do deep analysis, deep analytics. The second capability which we're bringing about is our own omni-channel uh, experience, which means ability to craft relevant offers for customers, understanding what a customer needs. If he calls into call center, if he walks into a branch, what have you, or tomorrow and as our plans do so, if he walks into one of our preferred merchants and he wants to buy a financial product at a merchant, it's important that you give him that omni-channel experience. I would call our organization at an enterprise level probably the most digital savvy organization reaching out to our 40 million customers and ever increasing uh, customer base. I would urge all of us as employees uh, of HDFC Bank to say digital is the way forward, especially for our incremental new business segments, which we're going to go. We need to be ready as a bank for the customer for of the next five to 10 years or maybe even longer. On an incremental basis, it's important to start thinking from grounds up, create new products, processes, customer interfaces, uh, etc., which are purely digital under the philosophy of what you call zero touch. And I can guarantee you that when you take the existing bank and the new bank put together, it will be a far leaner, meaner, stronger version of what you would have ever seen over the last 25 years. 
so i wish you all the best let's go ahead and let's create this new digital world for the bank thank you so much parag and with that we have come to an end of this episode of in conversation it's really really been a uh, great having you with us we really enjoyed the conversation and i'm sure our viewers will as well uh thank you once again and lovely having you here with us